<sighs> Alright. Oh man. So, I was gonna record today's video wearing these glasses because, you know, I look more of a software engineer that way. But then I realized that if I just move my head around, you're gonna see this light. And that's, that's distracting. So, until I figured that out, you have to deal with the not so nerdy looking me. That's subjective. Hi guys, my name is Preet and I am a graduate software engineer working at Matter. Um, and today we're going to be talking about, and I made a list, um, let me just tell, there's seven things on my items. We're going to talk about the seven things that I enjoy about being a software engineer. I was going to put seven things in the title, but then I didn't even know there were going to be seven things until I started typing them up and I didn't want to feel pressured. Yeah, that's, this is way too much conversation for a title. Let's just get into number one because I know that I can get into very long rants and we've seen that from my first video that was 18 minutes long. Alright, number one is all I need to do software engineering or programming as a computer. And that's, that's a really interesting one because you know how most jobs or most professions require you either to have special tools available to you or you need to be in different like in a specialized environment such as if you're a lawyer then you need to be you mostly are at not mostly you're sometimes at court but you have to be at court um, if you're a doctor you have to be in the hospital you can't just be a doctor sitting at home so yeah with software it's very kind of you all you need is a computer and you can just do your work because all you're doing is writing software and communicating with people which conveniently leads me to my second point which is that I can work from anywhere in the world <sighs> or at least I would have wished I can work from anywhere in New Zealand at the moment um, basically what I'm trying to get to is that I can just all because I need only a computer it sort of gives me the flexibility to just go out and work from literally anywhere, which means that I can be sleeping in my bed working, I can be here working, or I can be in the office working, or I can just be at a cafe and working from there, as long as I have an internet connection. We're good. All right, now to the third bit, which I know the first two points a lot of people sort of mentioned, and I'm sure that you've read about it a lot in if you've been doing research on if you want to pursue software engineering as a career path, you've come across the first two points a lot, but what I think a lot of people don't mention, or at least that I've seen, is that software engineering is a very creative sort of profession um, in that you can literally think of making any digital product and you can make it given that you're smart enough to make it, I'm I'm dumb. So all I can do is make a website that says, hi, my name is Preet. Um, but given you sort of invest in your um, programming skills and sort of how to develop software, the boundaries of what you can build are basically limitless. Um, yeah, so all you need is sort of the passion to drive you and you can pretty much create whatever. All right, number four is money, which, yeah, is good, um, or at least that I've heard of. Um, a lot of my friends who graduated or are now working, I know they're earning quite a bit, and compared to like my other friends who aren't doing software engineering, yeah, you as a, as a graduate at least, you start off better than most other professions. You start off sort of similar to what, actually better than what a doctor would earn, but then the doctor sort of, whoever has done a doctorate sort of beats you. Um, but yeah, in the start, and then sort of going along your future career, you could be making anywhere from like 200,000 to like 250K. Not that I'm anywhere close to that, just saying. Number four, the future prospectus of sort of this profession is super good like if you're I think with COVID a lot of us have realized how dependent we are on software 
and with COVID, we've sort of grown more and more dependent on technology and companies are starting to realize that. And over the next few years, we're sort of going to see that accelerate a lot more in that. The, and it's going to cause a huge demand on software engineers. And what I'm trying to say is if, if you have a software degree or you know how to program, you don't need a software degree if you know how to program, you're, you're going to be quite in demand because a lot of what's going to be developed in the future sort of is going to, in one way or another, sort of rely on software. Like who would have thought your watch would need software? Now it does. Who would have thought your car needed digital software? Now it does. Who, need, who thought your fridge needed Android running on it? Now it does. The sixth thing sort of in this video is a bit more personal to me. Um, this, like when I, since I was young, I've sort of had a huge like love for technology. Like whenever my parents used to buy me anything, this is what they tell me. And this is mostly how I remember it. If I ever got presents, like if I ever got a car, the next day that car would be sort of in pieces and I would have built a fan out of it. Um, so from that young age, I've sort of learned to love technology and now that I've sort of grown up, I've s sort of started to lean more towards loving software more than I do hardware because for some reason I think that hardware is a lot more harder and I don't, I just don't get how people who study sort of hardware engineering do it because it's hard for me. Doing software engineering sort of has been a nice intersection no sort of a weave of like my personal whatever I love personally and what I can do professionally like a lot of us I know that a lot of us love to do things we have passion for something but we can't translate that professionally because either there's not much demand or you just don't get paid and paid well or that you need to be super specialized in it to even start to make a career out of it like sports you need to be really good to be able to sort of start making money from it um so with software it's i've i've been immensely grateful that i sort of found this transition and it's been great for me so far and lastly the last point in this video sort of relates to the degree aspect of software engineering and how like a lot of us are starting to realize that universities are coherently not so great um, and I've, I've also realized like grades don't matter as much as you think they would in a software degree like for I think every single place that I've interviewed except for like one company as far as I can remember they've never asked me for my grades nor have nor have they mattered as much as you'd think they would like if you study medicine you sort of realize that like you need a good grade to get in like to get into good hospitals but like with software it's what they're looking for is more passion and sort of what you've done outside of university your core curriculars in terms of software development those things play a huge role compared to what grade you've gotten at university because the people who are hiring you have been through the degree that currently i guess i'm going i've been through and they know that an exam about software isn't really the best way to test how good someone is at writing software. So yeah, like what I'm trying to get to is if you're currently doing a software engineering degree and your grades aren't as great as you'd like them to be, but you know that you have a strong passion for software, you like sort of building um, computer programs or anything, and you have been sort of applying that passion, you've been translating that passion into code in terms of like doing extra stuff outside of university and you have a portfolio to show off like your GitHub or something, you can be quite confident that that's, that's good enough to sort of get you into interviews and get you jobs, even though you have very bad grades because at the end of the day, no company is interested in your grades except for some who I really wish stop being interested in grades and more interested in sort of yeah I don't know it's up to them but like most like I've seen 90% of these companies don't really care about your grades um yeah 
seven things. That's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. This this was my first sort of video where I had to script mini script what I was talking about and I feel like I did an okay job talking about it. So if you did enjoy this type of video, this type of a video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. God, I'm becoming that kind of a human. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You know, the things that YouTubers keep telling you to do. I wanna say it so bad, but yeah, I'm not gonna say it. Hope you have a great day and if you sort of enjoy listening to these ranty things, not ranty, there's very incoherent non-structured things that I'm making, make sure to check back or I hope the YouTube algorithm works its magic and shows you the next video or something. Until then, take care and bye.